Hello and welcome to the Coach Me podcast. My name is Nadine Stille, founder of Coach Me and your podcast host. Laura Dunn, a trained and experienced early career and confidence coach, joins us today to share insights, tips, and coaching questions on how we can nurture human connections during the pandemic. First up, a little bit more about Laura. Her purpose is to help people find meaningful direction in their lives as early as possible and to create and navigate the personal changes that come with that. Laura's approach centers on being real, courageous, and compassionate. With a decade of HR experience in global organizations, supporting people in their early to mid-career with a focus on leadership development, Laura now specializes in coaching, her happy place. She trained with leading organization Barefoot Coaching in the UK, and with more than 500 hours of one-on-one -on -one coaching, she's currently in the process of becoming a professional certified coach accredited through the International Coaching Federation. Laura helps people build clarity, confidence, and courage to make desired changes and to navigate those changes with resilience. In her coaching, Laura is known to create a gentle calmness while also challenging her clients where they need it the most. This all leads me back to today's topic, nurturing human connection during a pandemic. During this podcast episode, we learn how human connections have shifted in three core ways as a result of the pandemic. We discover ideas and perspectives to help us nurture connection in times when traditional ways of connecting are more limited. And we explore the concepts of loneliness and solitude and how solitude actually plays a key role in enhancing human connection. Please make sure to check out the additional resources in the show notes that include a list of ideas and activities that will help us. Let's tune in. Hi, Laura. Welcome to the podcast. Hi, Nadine. It's so, so great to be here. I love having conversations with you, Nadine. So I'm just really excited just to get into this topic. Same here. We've already talked about it quite a bit, actually, as a preparation uh, for this. And it kept coming up on my side as well quite a bit, actually. So what are we talking about today? We're talking about nurturing connection in a pandemic mm -hmm. and specifically nurturing human connection in a pandemic. So this year, I think, has really shaken up a lot of our connections and really had made us have to think kind of very differently about our relationships, our friendships, how do we look after ourselves and that theme of kind of loneliness that a lot of people might be feeling at the moment, which is not a new theme. It's existed for a really long time, as long as humankind, but now it's coming into really laser sharp focus. And so what can we do to nurture our human connections when mm -hmm. physical distancing is in place and when we're in lockdowns and we can't actually access the people around us in the same way? Wow, it's so topical and very, very important. So it's like, I've seen it like ever since you said, this is what we're going to talk about. This is something that you're really passionate about. I kept just seeing it so much more in days of focus as well. It's coming up um, in all sorts of conversations. So I'm very hopeful that people will get a lot of value out of what we're talking about today. And that obviously explains passionate about it, right? Yeah, I feel like it's such an important topic for us to think about. And it's not necessarily the kind of topic we would talk about. We don't have open mm -hmm. conversations often about, about human connection. And, and maybe we don't even understand how important this is for us as humans. Um, it's a fundamental mm -hmm. human need to have that sense of belonging. Mm -hmm. So I believe this year, and I say this year as if everything's going to change on 1st of January 2021, but that's not going to happen. So this experience mm -hmm. of time in our lives, we might need to be more intentional around the way we connect or the way we get the benefit of human connection in different ways. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So what, when you say connection, what exactly does that yeah. Mean? So, and I remember when we started talking about this, Nadine, it was like, where do we start? How, there's so many different ways that you can look at connection. Mm -hmm. So connection in the sense that we're talking about it today is the sense of belonging. And we'll be looking at it specifically from the human perspective or the human lens. So mm -hmm. our relationships, our friendships, maybe even not relationships and friendships that exist, but maybe even acquaintances, our interactions with other people 
and also mm-hmm. really importantly with ourselves. And so when we think of connection, you usually think of kind of two pieces connecting or two elements connecting. Connection and human and social connection is also really important to what does that mean for how do we look after ourselves as well? How do we connect with ourselves? Yeah, that's probably something that most people forget, including myself. Like, what are you connected? Like, what what does that actually mean, human connection to? Yeah, it starts with yourself, I guess, as well. The way you're treating yourself, the way you're maybe even talking to yourself, all things like this as well. So it's super important. Cool. Great. So how do you think human connections are changing as a result of the pandemic? Like, what is... What has happened? Yeah. Well, when we look back over the last eight to 10 months, I think many of us will see that the connections that we have with others may have changed in kind of three core ways. So that Mm -hmm. first way is we've had connections that have strengthened or even we've had new connections in our lives. So we've created friendships unexpectedly or in unexpected places. And maybe even the strengthening of friendships and relationships and connection with self has also happened in unexpected ways. But Mm -hmm. it's it's fair to say probably that now we are looking, we're almost forced to think about quality over quantity. So previously we would go to the pub or we'd go to a cafe, we'd be interacting with all sorts of people. You know, think about how many people we did interact in just one day interact with Mm -hmm. and now we're weighing up risks every day just generally like in our decisions we have to make these decisions every moment and with that we're also weighing up the risk of our connection and our kind of physical connection like who do we choose to spend that time with who do I choose to spend the time with in the evening on zoom yeah because also we are being told that we have to limit our interactions as well, right? So if it's like you're only allowed to meet five other people, who are these five people are going to be? Yeah. Right? And who do we trust in that circle? Yeah, exactly. And then also who do we welcome? Who do we want to protect? Um, and that's the difficult yes. decision is you might you might Ooh. have somebody you really want to be able to see but you can't. And so then we mm-hmm. have to think more creatively and openly and maybe a bit more intentionally but how do we reach those people in our lives that are important that we haven't Mm -hmm. we can't access for one reason or another so Mm -hmm. that would be like one way that connections have changed this year they've become stronger in another sense they have become more strained and we found ourselves in this position where we may have to re-evaluate that connection and that interaction mm-hmm. with somebody else, either to maintain that connection because it's really important to us because we really have to, mm-hmm. or to say, actually, I don't need this anymore. It's creating too much toxicity in my life. I need to let go. Mm-hmm. And both yeah. of those can be challenging. And, and I think where it becomes strained is again in the kind of unexpected places, probably with our closest people, where we've been thrown into a space, possibly together with somebody else. And yeah, I think we're valuing now space and having time to ourselves and being able to step away and come back to the people mm. we are closest with in our lives. Yeah. That's the second way. And then a third way is that we might be feeling like we're lacking connection in some form. So that might manifest itself. Like I said earlier, in, in terms of loneliness, we might be experiencing more loneliness than we have previously. Mm. It could inversely be like overwhelm. So we have to remember we're in so many different situations. Some of us have too much time to ourselves. Some of us have no time to ourselves yeah. and constantly with other people. And so it could well show up as overwhelm or maybe just this feeling of something's missing, a bit like general mm-hmm. unease. We can't really put our finger on it, but there's something kind of missing. Mm-hmm. And we know that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's actually three gigantic shifts yeah. and everything kind of can happen at any time, but they're quite, it's a framework that it, or it happened because it had to happen this way, right? And something I guess we, we've taken for granted before, like you said, you just meet people here and there and now, whoa, <laughs> how are you going to deal with exactly. that? Okay. okay, so if we're going a bit deeper into this, the, so the first part was people are kind of strengthened or the, the relationship and the connections have have strengthened. And you've already like explained 
what that actually means and looks like with regards to belonging. Is there anything else that you want to say around that topic or do you want to like explore the other two areas? I think in a way, this is the easiest one. This is what is feeding our sense of belonging mm -hmm. um, and that belonging is important. It's something that we need in our lives. If we don't have it, mm -hmm. we don't feel good. And so in that sense, it's kind of easy. It's like, yay, win. We've got something that is feeding that, albeit mm -hmm. we have physical distancing, restrictions with lockdowns, all of that. And in that space, I'm seeing people become more open as well and more vulnerable. We're going through a lot. And part of strengthening a relationship is being able to be open and vulnerable with that other person. Mm -hmm. And so conversations that may not have been so easy or may not even have happened a year ago have had to happen and that has helped us get stronger too mm -hmm. yeah and by being that more vulnerable and open it's it's kind of a, a circle it creates even deeper relationships yes, exactly. that you can open up more and so okay cool yeah i can totally also see that and um, ha have experienced that so the second big shift that you've mentioned earlier is when relationships or connections are really strained How are people dealing with that? Yeah, so this is this is a bit tougher because it's making us mm. really look in the mirror to so look at what is going on. And I think often it takes that moment of really intense negative emotions, whether that's kind of frustration or anger. It's like the, the volcano bursts. It's been bubbling mm -hmm. for a while. And it sometimes it takes that to really look at what's going on either with a relationship with somebody else or when I say relationship I mean that broadly so I'm not talking about partner I'm talking about partner and friend and family member whatever that relationship is yeah we could kind of almost forced to look at it because it reaches that point ideally we're not letting it get to that point we're kind of spotting it before it happens so we can manage it yeah. we can get ahead of that and so what people can do is Be more self-aware, so build that self-awareness, know yourself. Just checking in with yourself regularly, which can be hard when you've got others around you. When you've got all the distractions around you, it can be hard to just check in. So find those moments where you can check in. And maybe this sounds silly, but maybe it's in the shower where you're just kind of going through, okay, how am I feeling today? Mm -hmm. What am I thinking? Whatever it is, just to tune into your feelings that day. Mm -hmm. Plus, it's it was something else that came to mind because I'm doing some um, sort of meditations, and one of them is is like let the water just wash away those negative that negativity yes. while literally having a shower. It's it's actually not just a meditation; it's an actual thing that can happen, a physical feeling, right? So you can say, like, okay, you just let all that negativity or that stress wash away and, and see what effect that might have. So it's that's perfect, actually, uh, isn't it? It's a perfect place to like meditate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then if you can get to the point where you're kind of checking in, this is a bit harder, but checking in in the moment. So you're when, when you're with somebody mm. or maybe it's not when you're with somebody, but maybe it's when you just after you're with somebody. So you're kind of, what's the feeling mm -hmm. that you're left with? How are you feeling then? What are you thinking? Mm -hmm. And What do you feel in your body? So, so often our bodies give us the clues as to how we're feeling. It can be really hard to articulate emotion. And maybe we can't even put our finger on it. But if we notice the impact that that's having on our bodies, are you feeling it in your shoulders and your back? Are you feeling it in your stomach? Are you feeling it all over? Or is your head really fuzzy? You know? Mm. Yeah. Or is your throat, you cannot talk. Yeah, you feel absolutely. Like you're about to like, you know it's like suffocating right or something like that. and it's yeah. different for everybody so when you can tune into mm -hmm. that you become more aware of the impact of that relationship on you and sometimes that manifests itself before your emotions so it's like your clue to okay i'm beginning to feel like that i notice that i'm feeling this in my throat mm. so i need to pay attention to something yeah, yeah. Okay. so that would be number one is just Be aware of the cues that something might be off for you. And that's about really checking in and being aware of what's going on for you in the moment. Yeah, for strained relationships specifically. Yeah. Right? And then think about what's really important to you. So know your values. Sometimes a good way to actually identify your values is think about those moments where you have frustration and anger. Because often what's happening mm -hmm. in that moment is 
in that intense frustration or anger is that you are one of your core values, one of the things that you hold most important in life is being mm-hmm. missed. It's not there. That's mm-hmm. what triggers us because there's something yeah. there that's, that we feel is really important that's not there in that moment. Mm-hmm. Do you have an example for someone yeah. who's not really had that experience with identifying values? Yes, absolutely. So I'll give you some examples of what values could be if that mm-hmm. helps. So like respect might be a value. Mm-hmm. Freedom, space, learning, growth, creativity, all of these things. Mm-hmm. So think of those kind of conceptual concepts that you think mm-hmm. if the world didn't have these or if I didn't have these in my life, how would I feel? Or mm-hmm. inversely, what are the things, if you were like the ruler of your universe, what, what are the top three things that you would say, no question, these things need to exist in my world? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Makes sense. So that was another way of checking in with, if a, if a relationship is strange, you know, okay, you also need to know what's important to your, uh, for yeah, yourself. Yeah, so if you know what's important to you, there may be values mm-hmm. coming into strain, if that makes sense. So when you are aware of your values, when you know what's important to you, you can make decisions. Mm-hmm. That you can be more confident around your decisions because you know that your decisions are driven by your values. If you're living a value-driven life, you will feel more fulfilled and happier. Mm-hmm. And so then the question is, in the connections that I have right now, which of those connections are really aligning to my values and which are maybe not? Mm-hmm. And how do I make sure that the interactions I have help me to fill the kind of values bucket? So help me mm-hmm. feel more fulfilled because I know that they align to what I feel is important. Mm-hmm. And that goes back to what you said earlier about being very intentional. Yes, yeah. Right? And you know what? There's always a middle ground as well, because right? we can't expect everybody to have the same values as we have. Yeah. And this maybe leads into the next thing is just getting clear on your boundaries can be really important. And values can come into your boundary system too. So okay. for example, healthy boundaries equals healthy relationships. If you don't have boundaries in your relationships, and you don't know what they are then you risk having a toxic relationship because you may not know what is important to you and how do you make sure that that exists in your relationship. Yeah, until the boundaries are, are crossed. Exactly, right. yes. Yeah. And then it might be too late. Yeah. <laughs> so what would be a boundary? Like what's, like what's a realistic thing to happen, say, if you're, I don't know, your siblings or with your partner or... I don't know, maybe a work colleague, what's something like practical? Yeah. So as a boundary. the first is thinking about what are you okay with mm-hmm. and what are you not okay with? Okay. So just getting clear on those. So if we're thinking about a practical example, I'm going to go right down to basics here, right? So what is mm-hmm. not okay under that, I would hope is it's not okay for physical aggression to take place. It's not okay for physical abuse or mental or verbal abuse. That's not okay with me. Mm-hmm. So start with like the really, like, what are your human rights almost? Like what do you expect then? Mm-hmm. Actually, w- w- when you said this, something came up, it's like it just basically respect, yeah. right? Or not being lied to or that I can maybe rely on someone. If someone says, this is what I'm going to do for you or this is what's going to happen or I'm going to organize this for you then I would like to be able to trust this person and this person is reliable. And I can now see, you know, obviously how this fills in with values. One of my, my big values would be integrity. And in that belongs, you know, reliability and trust and truth and honesty and, and those type of things. And, and yeah. as we're speaking there, Nadine, the thought that came into my head is an example that yeah. I've had this year and I'm sure many have had is in getting used to the world as it is right now, we have had to navigate in our friendships the things that we're okay with and the things that we're not okay with. And so mm-hmm. it might be saying, I'm okay to meet with you. I'd like to meet with you if you can, if, if that's a possibility, but I'm not okay with us not wearing masks. Can we wear masks when we mm-hmm. go for our walk? Okay. So you think mm-hmm. about what are you comfortable with? I'm okay to have dinner with you, but can we have that outside in the summer or, you know, so it's just getting, I think initially at the beginning, especially as so people were trying to figure out what were they okay with 
And so being really in tune with, and we were all at different levels. Some people are kind of more comfortable than others. Others are more careful than others for so many different reasons. And so trying to almost balance all of that to the point where you find that middle ground Mm -hmm. has been really important. When you have your boundaries respected, it's a sure sign that you can invest in that friendship because they're okay with your boundaries. They want to respect your boundaries. And I think Mm -hmm. people struggle with this concept of boundaries, especially some people are really okay with it. You know, it's kind of comes very naturally. Other people, maybe Mm -hmm. they're, they're adaptable. They, not to say that others aren't adaptable, but they are more go with the flow. So they don't really mind what they do Mm -hmm. and they might find them kind of morphing into this friendship or relationship and kind of changing themselves because they're adapting Mm -hmm. and not even almost being conscious of that because they're not actually clear on what they need and what they want. And that's okay. There's so many people in that position. If you're feeling like you want to be adaptive to somebody else, that's a good thing. Just Mm -hmm. want you to consider. Yeah. No, it's like, I I, I get it. It's something that came up for me is like, as long as it's working for you, like you're adapting. And if it's working for you, because you're constantly adapting to others, then, you know, it's like fair enough, yeah. then that's okay. But if somewhere down the line, you're like, I don't actually know if that's what I want on why do I feel so, I don't know, something might come up when you're, you know, with your friends or relatives or whatever. And it's like, you can't quite put the thing on it then I guess it's time to go back to a bit of self-reflection and see it's like hey what values are being uh, are not yeah here. and and that might ultimately show itself as resentment or it's like oh I'm always doing yeah. I'm always changing I'm always doing what you want da, 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 you know and we also have to look at ourselves at that point and say well how have I contributed to this does this other person mm-hmm. know have I given them the information they need to know yeah. to say so that they know what I'm okay with and what I'm not okay with yeah they might think that they're acting in you know best faith and in your yeah. in your favor or doing you a, a service and then actually it might be a disservice in some way without them knowing and how can they how can they possibly know that if you don't share it with them so it's a good thing to yeah. be able to establish those boundaries yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of open communication, I guess, yeah. that needs to happen in that sphere. So when we, and that takes courage. Yeah, totally. And that's where the, the next bit comes, which is open communication. Like once you have mm-hmm. established what your boundaries are, and what you can do is just write like three columns on a piece of paper. What am I okay with? What am I not okay with? And what am I willing to compromise on? And then the yeah. next step is communication. Okay, and that comes with okay. trust, relationship, bravery courage just say it as it is maybe it's Mm -hmm. not going to come out the right way the first time but that's okay sometimes these conversations are kind of awkward focus on the outcome of that conversation not the kind of way to get there necessarily yeah and it's like what what are the benefits the other person might have something to say to you about this it's like oh thank god now you told me now i know where you know they might have just not known how to start that type of conversation themselves and it might be a service for them too. Yeah. And they might appreciate okay, it. This is actually something I can tell you. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Great. Okay. So is everything around like the strained type of relationships? Is that? Yeah, I think it, so kind of to summarize is one is build your self-awareness. So that includes yeah. how are you feeling, checking in, knowing your values. Mm -hmm. Two is getting clear on what you need in that moment. So getting clear on your boundaries and Mm -hmm. what you need. And that might be space. I might be, I need to step away. I need to spend some time on my own for the benefit of this relationship. Mm -hmm. And that's where we'll talk about this later, but time alone helps create healthy connection Mm -hmm. and then have open communication um, around that. And then after that might be create discipline around what are the things that you want to change in order to Mm -hmm maintain that connection or let go of that connection and letting go of connections is hard isn't it it's not always easy and sometimes we have to hold ourselves back from the little habits that maybe we had in getting in touch with people and um, that we had before mm-hmm. so or showing up with that person in a different way in the way that you want to might take some discipline yeah but on the other hand I, it's like it might also be easier in some way to letting go of conversation or of of those type of relationships because you can only, everyone can only like reach out to so and so many people or, you know, you cannot 
physically meet up, say, at your workplace all the time or with all your friends. And so it kind of fizzles out. That's so true. Well. So maybe We're that's... limited in the number of connections we can have too. So we, so we yeah. have to bear that in mind. And it might feel like a relief. So when you have the awareness, it gives you a much stronger position to make decisions from because you're not doubting those decisions in the same way. You don't, you're getting much clearer on why you might be making a decision and much more intentional mm-hmm. about that. Yeah. Again, back to the intention. Yeah, so much. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yes. I know, and awareness, it all starts within. Okay, cool. So those are the things around, like we've covered um, if relationships are stronger, actually, one if they're kind of strained in some way. And then there's a whole area about not having relationships at all or feeling like you don't have yeah. them. So what about that? That seems kind of, it kind of seems to come up quite a bit. It's like, oh, I, I, I don't have people around me. And it's an, it's an actual, like, we can only have so many people here, but not everyone has. It's like, actually, both you and me, we, we're expats or immigrants, right? And we don't have our larger family around us. That's it. You know, and even if we did, we'd still be having to make those hard decisions around whether or not we see certain family members or not. And so, in a sense, that like geographical distance is the same distance whether you've got family down the road or whether you've got family on the other side of the country where we're all thinking, what are we going to do for Christmas this year? Well, many of us are thinking that wherever we are. Mm -hmm. wherever we are and whatever our situation so when we think about that lack of connection do you know what I think this word social distancing has a lot to answer for because when COVID started you know it was like that was the word that we used and you see it on signs and you say Mm -hmm. social distance make sure you keep your distance what we're actually doing we don't need to socially distance we at this moment in time need to be careful around the physical distance and there's a difference. So when exactly. we hear that word social, it kind of puts you into a tailspin because you think, well, what about, what about my social life? <laughs> I can't, can I not have a social life? It's kind of implicit that we are distancing ourselves socially. And I don't think that has to be the case. Yeah. So one way in which this is, and this is, I'll probably talk about more about this than overwhelm, which is the other way that it manifests itself is, Mm-hmm. loneliness and that feeling that something is missing or that feeling like I can't I can't give that person a hug anymore I can't even see that person I don't even know when I'm going to be able to see that person maybe you are new to a city or new to a country or new to a place and you don't have your established friendships here and so that that in-person mm-hmm. connection you can't have in the same way it becomes more strained. Well, the thing is, these pathways that we use, Vivek Murphy, who I'll talk about in a minute because he's amazing and done so mm. much work on on this topic of loneliness, he calls mm. them pathways, like our traditional pathways are no longer available in the same way to us to connect than they were before. Mm-hmm. And that's why we need to get creative. Something that came up earlier for me, some things he'd like to quote on this, because it's like, oh my gosh, you can go down a rabbit hole and talking about yes. this and you've done like so much research around it. I still feel that specifically the word loneliness seems to still have some a taboo You're right. like yeah. label around it, right? There is stigma around that word. And I hope that this year, as with many topics and conversations that are happening this year, this is one of those conversations that comes to the table. Loneliness mm-hmm. is something that people have experienced for a long time. And actually Vivek, his research, he is the former general surgeon of the United States. And so one mm-hmm. of the first things he did was he went to visit all the, many, many hospitals around the U.S. and ask what's going on. Mm-hmm. Like, what's your, what are your, the problems that you're facing? What are your patients facing? Trying to gather the themes. And he realized that underlying all of these physical themes like of physical illness was this undercurrent of loneliness that many, many people are experiencing. And so sometimes we mistake that word loneliness for being alone. So we equate it to being on your own. So one person, nobody else around you physically. Mm-hmm. 
like physically yeah. yeah and that's that's actually not the case so loneliness is felt by almost all of us at some point mm-hmm. we could be in a really strong relationship we could have great relationships with our family and with our friends and still feel the sense of loneliness you could be surrounded by loads of people and still feel lonely and mm-hmm. on the other hand you could be living on your own and feel really connected and not have that sense of loneliness mm-hmm. his definition of loneliness is the subjective feeling that you are lacking the social connections you need and so it's that gap mm-hmm. between what you have and what you feel you need that's that feeling of mm-hmm. loneliness wow i i hope that this year I think more of us are feeling it. And what my hope is, is that yeah. in experiencing that, we can create this kind of collective empathy towards loneliness so that as mm-hmm. we come out of the pandemic, we don't forget the people that might be feeling lonely. We don't forget loneliness. We don't not look at it. Mm-hmm. And we empathize in a different way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When we first talked about you know, our, our topic today, and you told me that loneliness kind of feeds in with that as well. I was like, oh my gosh, I had just read this research about this as well. And there's some research that says loneliness is has such a big impact on your physical and mental health. Is it's bad as, um, I don't know, being a chain smoker or having a high blood pressure and things like that. So it's it's really like, it's vital to not feel that way or when you feel it to kind of do things to get you out of that feeling and you know for you to get physically and mentally better and I'm glad you're bringing this on and have some have some tips for us I hope do you yes, yeah, yeah yeah I do I want to like <laughs> I want to create hope because I know that people might be feeling it thinking oh my gosh what can I do about this and the thing you're right what you, what you say is the research does say say that it does have this impact Let's not be scared by that fact because there are things that we can do to support our loneliness. And what's really important is that we are aware that it is important. Mm. So, and that's this word intention, it keeps coming up. That's why we need to be intentional because this year it's possible that we are lacking some of that. And actually, Vivek, Mm. he, he breaks it down in a way that can make this huge topic kind of feel a bit more tangible. So, He says there are three dimensions of loneliness. So Mm -hmm. intimate or emotional, relational or social and collective. And that intimate or emotional is having someone that you can confide in and with whom you have this really strong mutual affection and and trust, essentially. Don't Mm -hmm. be thrown off by the word intimate there because it's not necessarily physical. It is just having that close confidence, somebody you can... Yeah. have that mutual trust with like, em- nearly maybe emotional intimacy yeah that's it that's a nice way to put it yeah. yeah sure yeah and then the relational or socialist is that need for healthy quality friendships and companionship um, and then mm-hmm. the last one collective is um the need for a group or community of people who share interests in a sense of purpose so they're sharing your interests mm-hmm. in a sense of purpose and and when we break that down these two different these three different elements this explains why we might feel lonely even though we have connection in some other place so we might have strong connection mm-hmm. relational or social connection we've got really healthy good quality friendships and we feel supported but we're lacking maybe collective we're not feeling like we're part of a group that has that same sense of purpose that we do as an example okay so all three kind of have to be in in place yeah somehow. absolutely and okay. so if i was coaching okay. with, with someone who we were focusing on this as a topic mm. i would say okay we'll rate each of these on a scale of zero to ten mm. how fulfilled or satisfied do you feel in your life right now with each of these And then when you've done that, what do you notice? What surprises you? What thoughts come up? What thoughts are emerging? And of those three, which one do you most want to focus on now? Mm -hmm. And once you've kind of started to zoom in on on the one that you want to focus on, well, what would it take to move that rating up by one point? Just one point. Mm-hmm. And that's how we can take something that's huge, really, and kind of fluffy and a bit vague, like, what do we mean by this, into something that, okay, well, what does this actually mean for me? What am I, 
missing in my life? How can I get clear on that? And what's just one small step? It doesn't have to be big. It could be yeah. a micro action, just one thing. It could be just reaching out to a friend you haven't spoken to in a long time. Yeah. It's a very tangible yeah. way of doing it. And it's, I guess, very, I mean, with coaching, that's why I think coaching, we're asking questions. It's, it's very individual, right? What might work for one person is not the thing that might work for someone yeah. else or gives that impact that you're looking for. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay, cool. How do, how do thoughts impact the feelings of loneliness? Thoughts can be, just keep this in, in your mind. So thoughts create feelings, create actions. And so thoughts, oh. they're powerful. And the great thing mm-hmm. about having, about knowing that is that they're the things so often we think, oh, I'm feeling sad because of this event that happened, but we're missing the bit in the middle. I'm feeling sad because actually I'm, what I'm thinking about this is that was really terrible. And it's those thoughts that's creating the sadness, not the event that's mm. creating the sadness. So it's thoughts, create feelings, create action. action. Yeah. Or action or okay. behavior, you know, kind of that's mm-hmm. once you have the feeling that kind of affects how you might show up or what you might do. Okay. So again, going back to Vivek, he makes this point of um, when you are feeling lonely, you can go into self-doubt. So you're feeling lonely. You might be having thoughts of, well, nobody's reaching out to me. Nobody cares, you know, right down to you. I'm not worthy of love. You know, it can be that strong. And so then that makes you feel bad. Those thoughts make you Mm -hmm. feel bad. And then it pushes you away even more from the relationships in your life because you kind of believe in those thoughts. So the, the, the quote that I'll read from his book, so shame and fear conspire to turn loneliness into a self-perpetuating condition, triggering self-doubt, which in turn lowers self-esteem and discourages us from reaching out. So mm-hmm. over time, that cycle may convince us that we don't matter to anyone, that we're unworthy of love, driving us ever inward and away from the very relationships that we need the most. That is how powerful mm-hmm. thoughts can be when it comes to loneliness. And so what can we do about that? What happens? How can we mitigate and mm-hmm. support our feelings and, the, and how we feel? so that we're not mm. spiraling into these kind of negative thoughts, which actually pull us away, not closer to the people in our lives. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. If, and you're projecting things that are most likely not true. Exactly. And so in that sense, it's kind of futile, isn't it? Because yeah. it's going on in your head. It's not actually, it's not true. It, it's not that you're not mm-hmm. unworthy of love. It's that that's how you're feeling. Mm-hmm. So what can you do if you're feeling that way? So one is mm-hmm. just notice what triggers the negative thoughts. If you can understand what triggers a negative thought spiral, which might take you in that direction, then over time you can get ahead of it. So you'll spot it, you'll see it, and then you can do something about it before it becomes mm-hmm. so spiraled or so out of control that when it then it's much, much harder to kind of come out of it. Mm-hmm. So one is just notice what triggers negative thoughts and then two, create strategies to reroute those thoughts in the moment. Okay. So an ex- example of that could be, let's say I'll talk about triggers, common triggers. Yeah. Maybe you notice that you have a conversation in your head, that you're having conversations in your head. And that every time you do that, it spirals into negative thinking. Um, so mm-hmm. the next time you can say, okay, I can, I recognize the voices. I'm hearing voices in my head. And then that's when you employ your strategy to do something with that. Yeah. Or another common trigger might be social media, flipping through your Instagram account, looking on Facebook, mm-hmm. getting into the comparison space that we often get to with social media that then yeah. triggers those thoughts. Or it might be that it's, and this might not be a trigger, but also think about your environment. When does this happen? Is it when you're doing... Mm-hmm mindless activities where you have the opportunity to get into your head as opposed to when you're working and you're focused on something or you're reading a book. So Mm -hmm. what is the environment around you? What's happening when you start to go into those thought patterns? Mm -hmm. 
And then it's like the thing that came up is like the boundary setting. It's yeah. not just necessarily what you refer to. It's the, the boundaries for other people. You're setting boundaries for yourself as well. I love that. That's really cool. To, yes, it's you thinking about where are you allowing yourself to go and what, where yeah. you're not allowing yourself to go. Yeah. And if it's, if that means, you know, you're setting a boundary of no social media for the next few weeks, then yeah. that's a very creative and resourceful way of make sure that you feel Absolutely. better. Absolutely. And then what do you need to do to make sure that happens? Take it off your phone, just to yes. make the app for a bit, you know, <laughs> yes. or whatever that is. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. See through that. Cool. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's all kind of connected. Yeah. <laughs> And then the, the, the trigger, so then you want a strategy. So you kind of like anticipate this happening or mm. anticipate that when it happens, this is the thing that you will do or one of the things that you mm. will do. So that could be many people turn to grounding exercises. So we talk about meditate. We talk about meditation a lot. Um, I know for some people that works and some people it maybe doesn't work. If it doesn't work for you, then find your own version of it. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of science to say that it does support you. You know, it helps to change your neural pathways. And so what works for you is, and that could be an activity as opposed to sitting and kind of meditating. Um, a good grounding mm -hmm. technique that I love is five, four, three, two, one, where you tune mm -hmm. into your senses slowly. So you might say, okay, what five things can I hear right now? What four things can I see? What three things can I touch? What two things can I smell? And what one thing can I taste? And you can mm -hmm. mix those up depending on what's going on. Like if you're yeah. eating dinner, usually the taste is the hardest one. <laughs> There's only one mm -hmm. thing I can taste. But if you're having dinner, you could <laughs> taste a million different things. Yeah. Or it might be if, you, if, if grounding exercises are not really your thing, then how can you change your activity to either distract that thought pattern to shift it yeah. or focus your mind on something else. So an activity that helps you get focused on something else or that positively distracts you in some form. So that could be reading. It could be mm -hmm. doing something creative, a creative project. It could be just finding something that makes you laugh, you know, something that simple. Yeah. Okay, cool. And if you'd have this with a client, say for instance, what would you ask that client? In yeah, I work a lot with clients in, in this space. Okay, so normally mm -hmm. I would ask them, what do you think would work for you? So when you think about mm -hmm. all of the different options that are available that will help you, help distract you in that moment, what do you think could work and what has worked mm -hmm. for you in the past? Do you remember a time when you have yeah. done that before and what helped? And then I would encourage them to, once we've identified the thing, whatever that is, we can be open-minded. Like it could be kind of silly. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I do sometimes is just go and stand on a really nice soft rug and just wiggle my toes. So it just feels really nice. It's like it grounds me. Uh, yeah. So, and then yeah. I would say, okay, let's experiment with that. So there's no pressure to get it right first time. You're building mm -hmm. a toolkit of strategies that you could use. And so let's just yeah. experiment with that for a week and see what happens. Yeah, you could just lie down yeah, exactly. and wiggle your entire you body do. on the rug, not just the feet, <laughs> and roll around in it. Totally. <laughs> who, you know, who, who cares? Have fun with it if that's what puts a smile on your face. In. Exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> okay, so that's one thing you, you can ask your um, your clients. Is there anything, anything else? Uh, yeah, I think there's questions around like what's happening. So building your awareness around the trigger. Mm -hmm. So really what is happening and when I say what's happening, I mean like what's happening around you? What are you doing? Who is there? Where are you? Even down to like, when does this happen? Is there a certain time of the day that it happens? Mm -hmm. And again, the same questions that we asked earlier. So what are you feeling in that moment? And where are you feeling that in your body? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Where does it show up? Hmm. Okay. Okay, cool. Wow. Lots to, lots to take away from that. So, um, if like we touched on that earlier, what if we don't have people in our household and we really kind of miss that human connection because we're kind of living on our own and, you know, kind of maybe new or there's no other people around us. What, what is there we can, we can do to get a bit of 
Yeah. So here, if you're living on your own, here's something I want to share with you that really struck me, which is we're talking about Mm -hmm. solitude. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if I say to you, Nadine, what comes up for you when you hear the word solitude? Sitting somewhere with a book. That sounds kind of peaceful. (laughs) Is it peaceful? Yes. Peaceful, calm, relaxed, kind of comfortable. Comfortable, okay. Mm -hmm. And if I say to you, what comes up when you hear the word isolation? Yeah, that kind of seems cold. Mm. That what comes to mind is isolation, distress in some way, or like force that comes up. Yeah. Solitude. No, not solitude, isolation. Yeah. I don't know. I like the image that came to mind was a prison cell. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. That sounds kind of heavy, doesn't it? Right, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, let's think about that concept of solitude because in both scenarios, solitude and isolation, we're probably on our own. Mm-hmm. And yet we hear again, it comes down to this word, the wording that we hear, isolation mm-hmm. doesn't feel good. So if we are living on our own, how can we see this moment as a time for solitude? How can we choose to see it from that perspective mm-hmm. instead of forced isolation? Mm. And then when we view it from that perspective, what's possible? Mm-hmm. And so you might think, well, why is this important? I need some kind of practical tips here. Right? <laughs> I, I, this is the, the, probably the most mind-blowing thing that I, or realization that I had in the yeah. research, which was solitude is really important to strengthen the connection with ourselves. And as a result of that, our connection with other people. Mm-hmm. And again, this is from the Vivek's work. We'll share the share reference to him. So he says, solitude paradoxically protects against loneliness. Huh. Okay. So what that means is if we're living on our own, it's actually not the end of the world. And we can have connection. We can use this time to really connect with ourselves, mm-hmm. to be able to nurture the connections that we have with others and, and it might be that we're doing that for our now selves or it might be that we're doing that for our future selves okay but it's an inten- again an intentional thing and it's more like a mindset is it more um, is that the difference frame it, yeah okay yeah. yes exactly so it's you know often i'd say to clients okay you're in a situation where there's a whole number of things you actually can't control what mm-hmm. can you control And many times what can you control is the mindset and the frame of mind you have looking at this situation. So how can you step around or look at it from a different viewpoint? And when we choose, we have it within ourselves to choose to see this time as solitude if we want to, as opposed to isolation. And what do you want to do with a time of solitude if you see it that way? Mm -hmm. How can you make the most of this time? How can you see it as an opportunity? Okay, great. So it must be hard if you're living alone right now because of the restrictions that are going on. So what can we share with people about that? So people listening and what are some ways we can kind of either reframe it or do about it? Are we hugging ourselves? Is that... Talking about human contact, like yeah, physical human like connection, yeah, yeah, like hugs, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, don't we all? We are all gonna really appreciate the hugs in our lives, right now. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, there, there is such a thing as skin hunger. It is a thing. Look it up. It's, uh-huh. it's something that people are feeling right now. So, what can we do? Mm-hmm. I think one of the things is we kind of have to accept that we don't, we can't have the in person in the way that we used to. Okay, so that's mm-hmm. one. And maybe we don't know if there is an alternative that really fully replaces that so I don't want to sort of sit here and say here's here's all the things you can do and you know this is going to be your complete alternative to human contact we don't know if these things can really truly replace it but let's think about that logically okay so human contact and having human contact releases hormones in our body Mm -hmm. of endorphins oxytocin dopamine Mm -hmm. and so if we're not having that human contact we may be lacking in some of those hormones Mm -hmm. so we may be having less of that so then that takes me to okay well logically what can we do let's just get straight to the jugular here like what can we do practically to give ourselves and our bodies the benefit 
of human contact when we can't have human contact what are the mm-hmm. other things we can do okay and some really yeah. cool stuff yeah so then yes. so it, to release your endorphins and you can do a google search just see what comes up here um, yeah. so regular exercise that always comes up so this is a reason to do regular exercise I'm not going to go through the whole list here. We can maybe share it. In, yeah, in I'll put, we'll put them yeah. in the show notes either in a separate document or we'll list them there. So uh, maybe yeah. like the, the top three for each one of those. Okay. So the thing that really struck me was listening to and creating music. Mm. That releases every single one of those hormones. Yeah. So are you listening to enough music in your life? Um, another one is eye contact. So make eye contact. How many times do we go into a coffee shop and we don't, or a supermarket, and we don't really interact with the person behind the, the till? Well, maybe mm-hmm. we could. Or the delivery person, maybe we could just look them in the eyes. Yeah. That would give us a little bit of oxytocin. And then sometimes the only thing that we really have access to um, with regards to like mimics or anything else in their face, because you can't, everyone's wearing a mask, right? So you can't see them necessarily smile, but you can see what's going on in their eyes. So kind exactly. of plays a focus into that. Yeah. Yeah. And smile as you're doing it. Maybe yeah. they can't see, but they, you, they will see the smile in your eyes. In your voice as well. Yeah. Or in your eyes. Yeah. The other thing that struck me was synchronous activity. So doing an activity together. So we get, we bond when we do activities together. Um, okay. That could be like a team sport or it could be singing in a choir. Mm-hmm. We can't do that in the same way right now, but there are loads of online experiences that we could sign up to. We could say, hey friend in the UK, do you want to do this with me? Let's go and make a cake. Let's learn how to do tapas for an afternoon or whatever it is Mm -hmm. to just find something that you can share together as opposed to just having conversation all the time. Like, what can you do together? Yeah. Great. I have a watch party that just came to mind. I heard (laughs) someone the other day is like, yeah, yeah, we all put on that movie and then we watched it together and we saw each other's reactions to that. It's like, okay, it's like never done that myself, but it's a creative way of just, you know, getting a few things in together or maybe even listening to music together. Exactly. And even if it feels a bit silly, that's the bonding bit. That's the, you will look back at that time and say, oh, do you remember when we did that? That was fun. Right. So it's, it, it, you know, just experiment with that. Okay, cool. So those things, we'll put the full list in the show notes for the podcast yep. so people can download that. Wow, that's a whole lot of information lot. around us. Yeah, I have like three final questions that I'm asking everyone who's coming on the podcast. But before we go into that, is there any like final final messages, anything you want to kind of summarize or bring across? Uh, yeah, I think I would say to, it's a year to be intentional. Mm -hmm. with your connections in a genuine way Mm -hmm. reach out don't be afraid to reach out most people are struggling right now in some form or another so if you reach out that you're probably going to get a really positive response from someone Um, and lean in so if somebody gets in touch with you and you haven't heard them for a while from them in a while or maybe you have this is not a time to be ignoring each other lean in if somebody Mm. touches base with you yeah yeah there's a good chance the other person might be feeling the same way and it's really grateful that you've had the courage (laughs) right yeah yeah oh i totally get it thank you for all that super valuable um knowledge and insights and and sharing all that i hope people get lots and lots of practical things from it if anyone starts a I don't know, a dance party or something synchronous, like maybe invite us or let us know yes. <laughs> how, that, how that goes. If you have uh, any of that going on, send us a picture. <laughs> so there's a, like, there's three questions that I'm asking everyone. One is like, what's a book recommendation that you yes. want to maybe check out? Okay. I've talked a lot about this guy, Vivek Murthy. So I'm mm-hmm. going to recommend his book, which is Together. And it came out mm-hmm. this year and it really kind of taps into this topic a lot in a lot more detail Mm -hmm. so i would recommend that if you don't want to get the book there's some great podcasts that he's done with brené brown with waterstones book company in the uk Mm -hmm. and so just google his name and see what comes up okay cool what's one thing on your bucket list on my bucket list i would love to do a road trip from Vancouver down to California. And it's, it's kind of cliche, isn't it? Do a road trip somewhere, but yeah, just take a few weeks and just really, uh, just explore the States. Oh my God, that would be yeah. one of my things too. Really? <laughs> yes, I've talked about it a few times and then I was like, oh no, now it's not possible. Oh, I know, it's a pandemic. I know, oh, no, it's not possible too. And it's like, ah, okay. <laughs> oh, hey, that's a good one. Yeah, I, I imagine this, this 
car and then you're just on the on those long straight roads and and exploring everything yeah, like, wow, music. That's cool. yeah. <laughs> obviously music and that actually leads us into the last uh, question what makes you dance oh okay if i type in 90s playlists on spotify or maybe like early 2000s playlist that's for sure gonna make me dance yeah the song that comes to my mind is 500 miles by the proclaimers i don't know if i would dance to that or just bob rather strongly or just jump around but jump anyway it's around. just a smile on my face <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one perfect thank you so much laura for thank you Nadine. everything <laughs> sharing all those insights yeah thank it's you. been really really lovely thank you so much for the opportunity <laughs> you're welcome thank you so much oh, bye bye i'm curious what resonated most with you Remember, there are lots of tips in the additional resources document of the show notes. To explore how you specifically can increase and nurture human connection, I'm inviting you to book an initial free coaching chat with Laura. Simply go to coachme.global forward slash book to request your session. That's coachme.global forward slash book. As usual, I'm grateful you've tuned in. That's it for our last episode of 2020. We'll be back with more coaching goodness early next year. Thank you and stay curious.